Hello everyone, this is Steve with the Free Bullion Investment Guide. Today is March 29th, and I'm doing a review and outlook price analysis video for silver and gold. This, we're on the one hour chart, and to quickly go over last week's video, I stated that uh, we, I thought that we had seen an end to the drastic price drops in both assets um, that we should see a uh, move up. I didn't say how drastic. Nobody really knows in this market how what kind of movement we're going to see in gold or silver. But I did think that we were going to see an end to the to just the hysteria of running to cash and selling gold and silver for that p purpose. And um, Clearly, that's what we saw last week. The price of gold moved up above the 1590 level. Right now, even though there's not much technical analysis to show you besides uh, support and resistance lines, uh, I can you can point out here we have one bull flag there. We got another bull flag there. And then in the gold price chart, what we may also, though, be seeing is a rising wedge pattern. A rising wedge pattern is a negative pattern, which means that I'm actually expecting to see some kind of consolidation in the price of gold next week. Um, but again, there aren't any sellers. There's very few sellers. Um, if What we'll see is people who bought up here likely um, maybe is selling off some profit. And then um, we should continue to see the price of silver and gold for that matter. This is gold's price chart, chart excuse me, gold and silver for that matter, move higher. To um, go over to gold's price, excuse me, <laughs> a little confusing, go, flipping back and forth. Silver's price chart. Um, silver also moved up in price last week. Um, it bounced around when it got up above uh, 1350 around these uh, support and resistance levels. Uh, what was resistance has now become support. It is now trading above 1430 at 1458.48, um, 48, excuse me, 1448. Um, and I expect to continue to see consolidation in the MACD on the one hour chart on silver. We're seeing it in the neutral zone. In the four hour chart for silver, it's showing that it's overbought and we may see it come down a little bit. It's so showing it in the RSI as well. And in the daily chart, it's showing that they're both still in oversold territory on the, uh, that, um, what the indicators are sh both showing the RSI and the MACD are both showing that we're in oversold territory for silver. Now, as far as for gold, the, I'm going to go backwards now, the way I just, uh, from which I just went with silver. So in gold's daily chart, it looks like we're a little bit above the neutral area in the RSI and the MACD, but um, as far as are we going to see consolidation, it kind of looks like it, but um, to zoom in here, the lines are very far apart, and the lines that I'm talking about is the signal lines in the MACD. So we could see some consolidation, but again, I don't expect it to be that much. Uh, there again, the sellers are not in the market. I don't know. I don't think I referenced it, but um, I tweeted this article last just yesterday, I believe, and. Um, it's about the futures market, how they're having a hard time finding physical to uh, trade, to um, promise somebody that they have when they trade it in the futures market. Um, and so the, the physical market has practically dried up and the sellers have also dried up. There's only buyers in this market, which is why we should only continue to see higher prices, but we'll likely see some consolidation. Maybe some of these individuals who bought uh, as it as the price progressed last week will uh, take some profit taking before we continue to see the price of gold move higher. Now back to silver again. Uh, so we we may see some consolidation before another move up on the daily chart for silver. We're right around, right below the neutral level, and we're clearly in oversold territory in the MACD as far as the, on the daily chart for silver. On the four hour chart for silver, we are in oversold territory. We're starting to sell off just a little bit. We are in oversold territory on the RSI. Again, we may see some consolidation before we move up again. And on the one hour chart on silver, um, also, we're still 
staying above the 1430 level it looks like we're done as far as on the hour ch hourly chart done with the the move up and we could be moving higher so i'm expecting some kind of small consolidation in the first of the week before we continue to move higher um but i also want to point out i do expect things to continue to stay crazy in the broader markets um and i'll point that out to you well right now and uh why is are things going to stay crazy let me see if they've updated this yet yes yes they have we're over seven hundred thousand uh corona cases around the world um over thirty three thousand deaths and over 150 recovered um what i have been touting the last few weeks has been south korea how south korea had what we want to see is south korea's numbers basically uh and their total cases clearly are going to rise that's a number that's always going to continue rising until it ends um but uh, their daily new cases has uh, come to a basically a, a hundred person minimum every day seems to still be getting it. But their active cases have also, though, continued to drop, which is a very good sign. And hopefully the United States and other countries around the world will also mimic the the numbers from um south korea uh in the united states right now we have 135,000 cases over 2300 deaths and over 4300 have recovered um i will have links to all the websites that i reference in this video down in the description area below um it, when you click on the usa from the world of meter this website uh it'll show you what each state has and what um It'll give you sources, so if you wish to click on your state um, or to find out what's going on in a state, you can just click on their sources. Um, but also, if you continue to scroll down, their total, the U.S.'s total cases are up now to 123,000. Uh, one thing that I was looking at earlier, the daily new cases kind of looks like we might be starting to peak. I hope so. Um, and... The active cases, though, are still rising, but hopefully the daily cases, we will see a drop starting to see sometime next week. The I know that the president and his um, coronavirus task force has stated that uh, they were on a two-week basis to hopefully see a peak after two weeks, and that two weeks is, end, I believe it ends either Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday, um, so... And another thing I wanted to go over on this uh, website real quick is China. I, I can't believe China and any of their numbers. Um, I don't understand why even the press even goes, uh, even looks at this number because it just, it, they have 1.4 billion people and they lock down millions of people. And it, on top of that, they're, I mean, when it first came out, I was hearing, I had read a few um, from a few sources that had come out of China that the numbers were much higher than uh, what they were reporting. And one thing that has recently come out is that um, the number of urns that are delivered to funeral homes have been incredible. I mean, to one funeral home, there's a report of over 5,000 urns because they cremated everybody that had the... Um, that has the virus, which quite honestly is likely what we're going to continue. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a mandate on that, because if if you go to a funeral and uh, unless they seal the casket, um, I people could get the virus. I know when I was a kid, my grandmother died of uh, pneumonia or some kind of illness, and everybody that went to her funeral got sick, including me. Um, so I was home for a week, puking my brains out and had a huge fever and so on. So it, it, if, if I would simply say, if you know somebody that unfortunately passes, I would um, not go to the funeral um, and pay your respects some other way um, because you could get it if they do not cremate the individual, um, even if that wasn't their wishes, unfortunately. Um, also, I wanted to show you this web, um, article from National Geographic. It, it shows you how the pandemic um, 
followed through with the Spanish flu that happened a little over a hundred years ago and how each city's numbers uh, correspond with how they dealt with it. Um, like in, in San Francisco, this is 106, six, excuse me, hundred, excuse me, 700, se <laughs> my dyslexia is getting the better of me, 673 out of a hundred thousand. Um, uh, that's that that's what this number that's what their average was i guess in san francisco but what it says here is that social distancing isn't something it is something from the past we've done it before and when the spanish flu came out um we all did it there's 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 lots of examples of uh how the spanish flu outbreak happened um at least in the united states but in san francisco they say that after rela relaxing social distancing measures san francisco faced a long second wave of deaths um and so Unfortunately, we may continue to see the, that's really what I think we may continue to see the panic in the markets in the Dow Jones Industrial. This may just be a dead cat bounce. Uh, what a dead cat bounce looks like is basically something that looks like this, and then we continue to fall. Um, and who knows what will happen to be completely honest with you but hopefully uh, people will stop getting the virus people will stop dying more people will recover and all of this we can put behind us and learn from it and um so anyways uh for silver and gold i expect to see some consolidation in both assets uh this week before we continue to move higher i do expect to be higher uh talking to you about higher numbers in both uh precious metals sometime next week so um or at next weekend when i talk to you again so i thank you for your time i pray that you will say stay safe stay healthy um and just take care and god bless